So Adobe Illustrator can be pretty intimidating for first time pin makers and for seasoned pin makers. So I'm going to take all of the scariness out of it for you today. Before I do though, go ahead and hit that bell so you can be notified every time I post a new video. It is going to be about enamel pins in some way, shape, or form, and I put them out on Friday, so go ahead and do that and subscribe and let's get into it. Okay, I am about to show you everything you need to know about Adobe Illustrator when it comes to making enamel pins. So when you're done with this video, Illustrator won't seem frustrating and you'll be able to power through so many designs. I've been using Illustrator for 15 years, so um, I have developed a system with my manufacturer to make designing pins and sending them to the factory an absolute breeze. Okay, step one, let's get your sketches into the computer. If you've been sketching on actual paper with a real life pen, um, then you can take a photo of the sketch with your phone and just email it to yourself. It's easy peasy. Or you can take a photo with your camera or you can scan it in. Um, if you're using something like Procreate, then you can just either airdrop it uh, between your iPad and your Mac or you can use something like Google Drive or again, just email it to yourself. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Again, as long as you're getting it onto your computer, that's perfect. <laughs> now we're going to hop over to actual Illustrator. <laughs> okay, so step two is to outline your image. So just drag your image file into Illustrator to open it up. And after this, I like to set the opacity of my sketch to about 50% and lock the layer so I don't mess anything up. So let's go ahead and do that now. I am going to select the layer and then come over here to the transparency and I'm gonna knock it back about 50%. Honestly, I'm gonna take it down even further. There we go. And then I'm gonna lock it. I don't want anything to mess with this original layer. And you can see I've done multiple sketches on top of this. This is clearly not the final, um, but I just want you to see what my process looks like. This is what I do every time. So I have locked the layer and I've made a second layer come down here. Okay, so then you create your new layer and then you head over to the pin tool. So this is the main tool that you'll use as you vector your image. It'll take some getting used to, and everyone I know who uses it hates it in the beginning, but once you practice enough, it'll become second nature. There are other options too, but let's look at the pen tool first because it's good to know the fundamentals. I am going to click here on the outline, and you can see it brings this line out. Then you click and hold, and then you can drag it and see how it's got these little handles. You can move those and make the curve whatever you want. If you want to make a point, just click. See it makes a little carrot shape here and that converts the anchor point. So you can click there and then you can keep following the curve around. And you can click and pull and click and pull while you follow your image around. And it takes getting used to, it truly, truly does. So you can go all the way around and connect it back at the beginning and then go back in to fudge the lines if you want. But I'm going to show you something else. So now I'm going to show you the curve tool. This thing is really cool. I'll actually put a <laughs> stroke on this one so you can see it a little bit better. So we're going to increase this so you can see the example. All right. Now watch this. This is pretty great. You click your curve tool, click again, straight line, right? No it anticipates the curve that you're doing. So you don't have to do that click and drag stuff. So that's just another way to do a curve. And I really like it. <laughs> and if you're having a hard time getting a curve to look the way you want, if you come over here, this is nested under the shaper tool, but the smooth tool is really great. If you just have some lines that are not quite doing what you want, you just drag it over top and it'll smooth it out. It's really cool. It's nice if you have some like subtle things, if you've got curls in hair or any kind of curly cues that are hard to do, the smooth tool is awesome. Okay, just a quick break. I just wanted to see if that was making sense for you. Um, let me know in the comments if the pen tool makes sense. Um, let me know if it's not quite as scary anymore. Um, and tell me how amazing the curve tool is in the comments, please, because I'm into it. Okay, all right, back to the work. Okay, so now I have traced over my sketch. 
I have everything even. I've added some details. I've adjusted the sketch and I'm going to hide the first layer. So I'm just working with the outline. Now putting in the color is a lot easier. What I like to do is lock the outline layer and make a new layer underneath. So new layer and then drag it under. Now this doesn't have to be perfect because it's hidden under your outlines and this goes by a lot faster and you can edit the colors really easily. So I am going to open my swatches. Let's do uh, color books. The color book you need to use is the Pantone Solid Coated. Now these colors are going to be different from uh, real life. So you want to get a color book if you can. Um, because it makes it super easy. So I am going to make the a pink. <laughs> um, kitten popsicle. So I have picked a pink just at random. And what you do is you take the pen tool and all you do is fill in the color. This can be super rough. See how I'm not even paying attention to the line quality. I'm just dooting around, just making sure that it doesn't overlap. Let's add an anchor point in there, bring that up. Oh man, that's done. <laughs> now another thing you can do, if you're using your color picker, let's come over here, get a little brown stick, right? So I'm going to come up here again to my pen tool and color the stick. This color you saw I just sampled was not a Pantone color. I just used the color picker for that. So if you have forgotten or you're using your color picker and you don't know how to find the closest Pantone color, all you have to do is go to edit edit colors, recolor artwork, and then if you come down here, this um, limits the color group to colors in a swatch library. So you want to pick the Pantone solid coated from here, and it will choose the closest Pantone color for you. If you go to your swatches, you'll see there's the 700C that we picked out for the pink, and there's the 728C, that it picked out as the closest color that matched our stick color. Isn't that awesome? I love that. You have your design, you have your colors, but what you really want to do now is to unlock and you want to expand everything. So everything is a stroke right now, basically. So I just want to show you an example of what will happen if you select it all and you make it smaller. Look at that. That's not cute. <laughs> Or if you make it bigger, see that? It scales the strokes, and you don't want that. This is the stroke width you like, and you want it to stay this way. So what you do is you select everything, and then you go to Object, Expand, Stroke. Okay? You see that? Now this has made the stroke a shape. So now if you select everything and make it super tiny, everything stays in scale. Another thing I like to do just to make it easier is to, um, like you can click on one of your strokes and then you do select same fill color. And then you can come over here to the Pathfinder and merge everything. And now it's all just one shape. So you move it, there it is. This makes it really easy to recolor in the template, which I will show you next. So yes, always expand your strokes. It's very important. Just keeps the integrity of your design so there are no questions as to what the stroke width is supposed to be. Now, you toss it in your template for your manufacturer. Uh, note all of your colors and any special details for them and you are done and we are going to pop it in your template which you can download below now make a smidgen smaller and you can change this to 
be your height, be your uh, width, whatever's easiest for you. I just like to be sure they always know the sizing right here. Okay, nothing crazy. Um, now, if you do want to indicate anything to go on the back of your pin, then you can hop over here and just hit Pathfinder again, select all. This works really well for this pin because everything's symmetrical. You'll want to flip it if, uh, if that's not the case. And I want to put, I want to get this up here. And then this way you can indicate where you want your post to go. And a little trick that I have here is I've got the back stamp that they can see and then right underneath of it, I have it in white. So you can copy that over as well. And then you can show exactly what you want your back stamp to look like too, which is really nice. If you wanna do something fancy, if you wanna do a pattern on the back, if you want it to make sure it's bigger, anything like that. Um, it's always good to have that. I also like to select and make this gold so there's no doubt in our minds what this looks like. Okay, so it does look a little harsh <laughs> with the pink, but all you have to do now is hop over here you noticed hard enamel, there's the finish. If you have any screen print details, you can change this. I'll probably have the little sparkles on here. I'm gonna change those to white. And you're done, this is perfect. It's, it's got your pin name, your artist name, your quantity, hard enamel, finish, screen print, back stamp, placement, front, back, and sizing. If you have any other notes, you can include them. And this is everything you need. Um, my manufacturer has approved this. She says there is nothing else I could possibly need <laughs> when I send her stuff. So it's perfect. So I've got a copy of this manufacturer approved template down below. So download it now for everything you need to send to your manufacturer. Seriously, it is the only template you will ever need. Okay. So that is how I vector all of my pin designs. <laughs> uh, that's exactly what I do every single time I go from sketch to vector to manufacturer. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, be sure to subscribe and share it with your pin maker friends and give me a beefy arm, one of those beefy arm emojis um, in the comments if you feel more confident about Illustrator now. I promise it is awesome. You will get the hang of it and you will be busting out so many pins. It's going to be incredible. <laughs> And if you want to start growing your following while you're waiting for your pins to come in, then be sure to check out my free webinar, The Five Ways to Grow Your Following Fast. Um, it's all about Instagram. I give super actionable stuff and you can kickstart your reach while you're waiting for your pins to come in. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out the other Enamel Pins 101 videos in my playlist. Someday I'll remember where that goes. <laughs> um, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.